Happy Wednesday, Paul Hadley Middle School. It is Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020, and this is your daily video announcement. Just a few reminders for you really quickly. Number one, you need to do your attendance quiz. I've updated attendance in Skyward based on the things that have been turned in uh, to Canvas and then synced over to Skyward. If you have questions about your attendance, you need to get onto Skyward. You need to figure out whether or not you have been marked absent. Some of you have been marked absent, uh, and it's because you haven't turned in uh, an assignment and an attendance quiz. If you've turned in one or the other, I've adjusted uh, your attendance based on that. If you haven't turned in anything, you have been marked absent. So go through into Skyward, find where it says attendance, figure out if you have been marked absent, and then get that corrected as soon as possible. Once you have your attendance figured out and you've done your attendance quiz, then you need to read a story by O. Henry called Hearts and Hands. Now, this is a story that um, fits with a lot of different kinds of O. Henry stories where he likes to put a little twist at the end. O. Henry really liked to play around with uh, a literary technique, uh, something called irony. Uh, he put a twist ending, uh, something that you did not expect to happen, uh, and frequently it was the opposite of what you expected to happen. So this is another example of an O. Henry short story that gives you a twist at the end. It's a good one. I like it, uh, but you have to stick with the story until the very end to get why there's a twist. Uh, once you've read your short story, then you need to do your hearts and hands questions assignment and get that submitted uh, to Canvas, and then I'll get those graded as soon as possible. Now, what is it that you need to know today in order to do everything uh, for my class really well? Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on O. Henry. We have read an O. Henry story before. It was called the Retrieved Reformation. Uh, where you have uh, the criminal who gets out of prison, he was a bank robber, and then at the end he turns his life around and instead of being arrested, he gets to go free. The story that we're reading today uh, kind of mirrors a little bit of that. But first, O. Henry, William Sidney Porter is his actual name. He was born in 1862 on September 11th. He passed away uh, June 5th, 1910. So he really wasn't that old. Uh, if you do the math there, uh, 38, 48, he was 48 years old. So uh, not incredibly old, but uh, he died because of excessive drinking. So he was an alcoholic, uh, which was something that uh, was fairly prevalent in the 18 hundreds and the early 1900s still is a, a problem that we uh, try to deal with as a society right now. Uh, he became a pharmacist at age 19. In 1894, he was ac accused of embezzlement at a bank that he worked at, and that is why he got convicted and he went to go uh, serve time in prison. We talked about that in class. Uh, after he was accused of embezzlement, he was on the run. He went to New Orleans and then he went to Honduras, which is a country in Central America. He was caught he was convicted in 1898 and he served five years in prison for embezzling and it ended up only being less than $900. It was like $890 some dollars. Uh, but as soon as he got out of prison, he moved to New York City and in 1902, he published 381 short stories, which is so much writing to do. Now, uh, one of the things that he loved to use in his short stories was irony, situational irony, uh, where the opposite ends up happening than what you expect to happen. There are three kinds of irony, and this is the really key teaching point that I want you to hear today. The first kind is verbal irony, and a lot of times this is called sarcasm. Uh, although sarcasm is a very specific kind of verbal irony where sarcasm is being used as a put down of some sort. Verbal irony is just saying the opposite of what you actually mean. Most of the time it's used as humor to make a joke, uh, but sometimes it is as a put down and it's called sarcasm. The second kind of irony is called situational irony, and that's when the opposite happens than what you expect to happen. Uh, if you want to think about this, um, 
it, uh, an example of this would be like somebody setting up a prank to pour water on somebody else's head, but the person who gets the water is the prankster, not the person who is being pranked. So the opposite ends up happening. Now, this is the irony that's gonna be in the hearts and hands story that you're gonna read today, but you won't know it until the very, very end. So pay attention to the very, very end. The very last line of the short story is gonna tell you why it's situational irony. Now, the third kind of irony is called dramatic irony. And this is used frequently in writing, especially in horror movies. This is the kind uh, of irony when the reader knows the information that the character doesn't, and the character acts in the opposite way the reader thinks that the character should act. Uh, this is a classic horror movie uh, trope. It's the villain is in the dark room, but the main character goes into that dark room anyway, and the viewer or the reader is yelling at that character, no, no, don't do that, don't do that at all. But the character does it anyway, uh, and does the opposite of what he or she should do based on the information that uh, is available to the reader. Okay. That's irony in a nutshell. Uh, there are tons and tons of different resources that you can find on the internet well, that will explain it in much more depth uh, because writers over the years have tried to do different things with irony to do something unique with this very fun writing technique. Today, after you get done reading the hearts and the hands story, then you need to go in, you need to answer the questions and submit your assignment. Make sure you do your attendance quiz. If you have questions, you need to email email me or message me through Canvas and I will get back to you as soon as I can between that nine to noon window, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. If you have questions outside that time, you can message me still, but I will probably be a little bit slower in getting back to you. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow.